two, three, fuck it. channel so today I am talking about money so I haven't had a lot of DMs a lot of questions a lot of comments on how I am financially stable at 16 so I am 16 years old and I got pregnant when I was 15 and I've been financially stable since then really and I turned 17 in October the 27th so I'm almost 17 now but I just thought I'd talk about how I'm financially stable and how I can afford my son and buy him all the things he needs because I do buy everything for him. So I buy all his toys, all his clothes, nappies, wipes, milk, like formula, um, bath stuff. I, you name it, I buy it, apart from obviously things that have been gifted to us very kindly. So I just thought I would explain in this video how I became financially stable at the age of 16. So I'm not going to waste much time and I'm just going to get onto this video. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you basically like a story of how I became financially stable basically. So from before I got pregnant, I was saving up for a phone. So how I was doing this was my mum was giving me a monthly allowance and so was my dad. It, was, it wasn't a lot but they were giving me a monthly allowance and it enabled me to save up for a phone because I needed a new phone. So I was saving for a new phone and then I just got close to hitting the target for a new phone and I found out I was pregnant. So what I decided to do was rather than spend the money on a, a phone, I decided to splurge it on my son. So that's what I did in the months July to December and a bit before from when I was saving up for a phone. So I just splurged it on him and buying him little things here and there. Um, Zach and his finances was nothing to do with me. He did not, and he still does not, input any money towards Oscar for his living here. He helps out costs and stuff for when Oscar's at his house. So Oscar obviously has his own room there, and he has obviously a little bouncer, a high chair, and so that's covered by Zach and his family, and then all stuff for Oscar is covered by me and me only so this is nothing to do with that job and this is and that has nothing to do with how i'm financially stable because i am financially stable on my own back off of zach and off of anybody else currently now obviously then from december i hit the nesting kind of area and i found out that i had loads of unwanted makeup and unwanted clothes so i headed over to depop and i decided to sell the lot and I was able to make probably around three grand in about a month just from selling all my stuff, which is crazy. So that enabled me to buy a laptop, to buy my phone, to, and then buy and then to buy all Oscar his all his furniture and everything. And then also save some for obviously now for nappies, wipes, food, clothes and stuff like that. So I was able to build up quite a good starting point. I did spend quite a lot of it outright so I probably didn't have that much left over. But then what that meant is that from obviously January onwards until he was born, I still had quite a large amount of money that if I did see something, I could just buy it. Sorry, Oscar just fell asleep. Um, but anyways, so then I started my YouTube channel in December 2019. I started it probably halfway through December and then because I grew quite rapidly in most cases of YouTube channels, I was able to get my account monetized or I was able to start the monetizing process at the beginning of February and then I got monetized probably a day or two before I got gave birth to Oscar. So then I got monetized on my YouTube channel on the, well, early uh, early March 2020. And then ever since then, I've been able to make money off of my YouTube, which is ad adding ads. If you don't know what monetization is, it just means that when you play a video, if ads are inserted in the video, I do get a little bit of commission from it. But that just helps me be financially stable within my son. So I'm lucky enough now that I have had quite a large variety of views on my videos so I do get a really stable income from YouTube. The only problem is it is a bit hit or miss. Some days you go really really well and some days you could go really really bad. It just depends on your views, it just depends on the videos you post and whether people like the content or not really. But I am lucky enough that with the amount that I have at the moment I am able to have a stable income from that. So I've been able to 
obviously splurge on my son with my YouTube revenue and I've also been able to save for future as well. And then that leads me on to also another social media platform which is TikTok. So I was quite lucky that my TikTok went like viral and I got quite a lot of a following base from it. And a company actually reached out to me and said that they'd pay me money if I promote a few songs. So a few songs on my TikTok have been from their company and I have actually got paid directly from them. So I have also had an extra money from them directly into my card and everything just for posting a TikTok because they want me to basically. So I've been able to also have another extra income of money. The only issue with that is it is a really hit or miss thing because some months you get like six songs and then other months you might only get one or none. It is a really hit or miss kind of scenario but I was able and I was lucky enough to be reached out by that company so I do also get money from TikTok as well as YouTube so that's really really good because it just means that every little bit of money is worth it. And then also on top of that I also get child benefit, which every parent in the UK gets. It just means that you either get £20 paid weekly into your bank account or you get £80 paid weekly, paid monthly into your bank account, depending on which scenario you choose. And then that, that's paid by the government to every parent, no matter what circumstances, unless there is a certain exact, it, like there is a certain extent, but majority of parents get that benefit, as you call it. But that doesn't mean that you're claiming benefits or anything. That literally just means that the government pay that to you. But most parents get that. But again, it is only 80 quid. But 80 quid still does go a long way. That covers all his nappies, all his food, all his wipes. And just stuff like that for the month. So that just helps out with that that kind of and then my youtube and my tiktok is more for savings or for toys or stuff like that for him and then occasionally i do obviously buy myself something but i don't splurge on myself as much as i do on oscar that's really it that's how i financially yeah. save so the next thing i want to talk about is savings so obviously i am 16 years old and i turned 17 in october and you can't really get a house in the uk until you're 18 as in you can't sign, sign a mortgage up until you're 18 so i cannot legally buy a house yet and i would prefer to buy a house outright rather than rent because renting is a very hit or miss subject because some contracts when you rent they only can give you a month's notice and then kick you out and i don't want to be in that position where i have to rush around thinking oh my god where am i going to move to i'm going to have to get moving vans i'm going to have to move the contents of this house over into another house and I just don't want that, so I prefer to buy a house outright rather than rent, which most people do do. But by the age I'm 18, I do want a house. And obviously that is that is quite a while away, but it's also not because I'm 17 in, in October. I keep forgetting I'm 17, that's crazy. So in a year and two months, I'm going to be 18, so that's 14 months. So in 14 months, I will hopefully have my own house. Now how I'm doing this is every month I'm saving myself a goal to put into my ISA. Now, an ISA is really good. So I have obviously a bank account and within the bank account that I am with, you can set, well, you, you can't anymore because it was a one-time offer kind of thing, but you could set up a mortgage ISA, which means that you put money into the ISA. You cannot withdraw it unless you buy a mortgage. So the only way you can use that money is with a mortgage. So I put money into it every month or every week or whenever I get any money that I don't need, I just whack it in there. And then that grows. Well, it doesn't grow. That's my money that I can save for a mortgage because then it knows that I can't touch it and I know that it's for my future and my house for Oscar and me. But then also on top of that, the reason why it was a one-time kind of thing is because it also gives back a 25% interest rate. So the government actually pays you 25% of what you put in there. So basically what that means is that if I pay in £15,000 in the course of the next year and two months, so if I put in £15 savings in the next just over a year, the government will legally have to pay me, I got it off my calculator because yeah, the government will have to legally pay me £3,750 onto that as well. So I will walk away with £18,750 and then that can be the 10% deposit that you have to put down on the house. So I'll be able to roughly get a house for 180, for £187,000, which 
is really good for a start at home like really really good like I know in the area that I'm living in and that I want to go to university in and everything I could easily find a decent three bed house for that like decent or I could find a really really nice two bed house for that like really nice so that's really really good because that that you, know, you don't really find many savings accounts that gives you a 25% interest rate so I was lucky enough that literally just as I turned 16 that scheme was closing in about six days, I'd say about a week, about a week after I turned 16, that scheme was closing for that ISA for 25% interest rate. But because I just turned 16 just in time, my mum was able to open me it because obviously she has to be the parental guidance on my bank account because I'm not 18 yet. So she had to open it up for me, but it's on my card, my phone, like only I can access it and all. But it just means that I have a future to look forward to within that bank account. So that's my ISA and then also I'm also saving for a car so obviously I turned 17 in October as I've said about a bazillion times and I'm gonna buy a car for my 17th birthday because I want to be able to drive because I'll be 17, I've got a kid, I need to go to school, I need to get places, I need to be on my feet all the time basically and I don't, and I don't want to rely on anybody else. So I'm gonna get a car when I'm 17 and saving and now I'm currently saving for that and I'm just leaving that money in my bank account because I'm, tr I'm trying to find the best savings account that I can to put money into it at the moment but which I can also withdraw out of because I'm not just gonna put all my money into an ISA and just save for a house because then also you need to think about that you need to buy furniture, you need to buy everything else. So I want another different savings account so that I can put a bit of money away into that account as well so that I can also save for the future but that I can also withdraw out of if that makes any sense, probably not. But hey, that's really all my money like plans really. There's not really much. Oscar has now woken up if you cannot hear him so I'm just gonna go get him out. So basically I don't know where I would be if I didn't have YouTube and and stuff because I would be financially stuck like I wouldn't be able to save for a house at this age I would not be able to buy first my first car when I'm 17 I wouldn't be able to give Oscar the life he's having at the moment which I'm so so grateful for and it it, it couldn't be done without you guys so honestly you guys do play a huge role in this and it's just amazing how far I came like compared to December because obviously I don't know what I would have done if my YouTube didn't get monetized, but it did and I'm so grateful that it did because it just means that it helps me out a lot and it helps Oscar out a lot and it just will give us hopefully the best life possible. Wouldn't it little man? So I hope this video cleared up a lot of questions about how I'm financially stable. It's literally social media and how I was before social media was because I got a monthly allowance and I used to do chores and just stuff like that. So as I said, Zach has nothing to do with this. My ISA is in my name and only I can put money into it. So me myself is putting money into it. Zach is not involved in that whatsoever. He makes his own money and his own living for himself and we have nothing to do with each other's finances. We do not split share, we do not do anything. My finances is my finances and his finances finances are his finances um we literally just are in a relationship but finances are our own at the moment so yeah I pay for everything for Oscar in my room and for him to live here and then Zach pays for everything well Zach and his family pay for everything at their house for him and I haven't had to contribute to that because I didn't see the need of buying two high chairs for him if one was going to be there and was going to be here. So that's why Zach and his family have paid for stuff over there. I have not asked for them to do any of that. They've done that off their own back, which is really sweet of them. But Oscar does only go there Friday to Sunday with me. And then he's here the rest of the week, which is why he has a lot more stuff and toys to play with here. And we love it. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And we will see you all again in our next video. Bye. Bye.